Alright, Brett. I really can't give a straightforward argument that's defensible in every sense of the word. You can punch holes through it in multiple fronts without a problem, and I don't deny that. Seeing as I've punched more than enough holes and come to the conclusions that I've come to myself anyways, but they're about as close as I can grab or grasp to a real answer to anything. The soul, if it exists per se, would be the energy flowing through your body, whether or not that energy takes a lesson learnt in life on with it. That, that's very debatable. As you said, there would need to be some form of interconnecting parts and pieces to it. As for the concept of your uh, bolted fetuses running around, I really don't think the individual soul has a true cognitive ability per se. It's more or less a fragment of a greater conglomeration of energy. So that energy, if you want to call it God, for lack of a better fucking term, be my guest. Personally, I just call it the big fucking blob. Um, I don't think the soul, per se, learns, as I had stated. I think it just splits off from this collective, per se, and occupies a living host for a temporary period of time. Whether that temporary period of time is conception and then back to the overall group or a tree, an animal, whatever. It's all interconnected to a degree. It all goes back and comes from the same point. Now, you wanted to know about ghosts. I can't say that I personally believe in ghosts, but I have had some really bizarre experiences. And once again, here I go exposing myself. At the age of 8 years old, I was hit by a car. Now, by technicality, the car should have killed me. But there was a moment between the car hitting me and me realizing I was underneath the car where I saw a little girl with blonde hair in a little blue spring dress on top of the car push me over. For the longest time I could still feel her handprint on my left shoulder. Now, that's not something I normally discuss simply because I personally have a very hard time believing that I actually saw what I saw. I asked the woman as I was being pulled up from underneath the car where the girl was and she didn't have an answer for me. She asked, she looked at me like I was in shock. And for a long time there I did think it was purely shock. But I could always feel the hand on my shoulder. I could always feel that impression of where it touched me, where it pushed me over. And I'd, I was, I'd always written it up as part of the shock, as part of the whole process of the mind playing tricks on me of seeing this little girl because no one could account for me seeing this girl and that's just a really bizarre example of the possibility and trust me I still say that there's a remote possibility that the girl was ever there but it never explained why I felt physically felt that hand on my shoulder for so long why I felt that impression of that hand Another example is, oh, I was probably, what, about seven years old at the time. And I had come into the house from playing outside, and this one I marked down to heat stroke more than anything else. But I was spinning myself around in the living room, and the next thing I know, I'm lying on the floor, and I, but I can see myself. I can see myself laying on the floor. And I'm floating above myself, and I can see my mum walk into the room, and try and wake me up, and try and get me to respond. And I'm sitting there, I'm trying to yell at her, trying to grab her, trying to touch her. And I would swing at her shoulder, but I couldn't see my own hand. And I swore I touched her, and she looked right up at me, looked right at my face, or where my face should have been. But there was no response, no reaction to where I was, and I was sitting there trying to yell, and there was nothing there. Well, afterwards, I told my mum about it, and she just said that I must have been daydreaming, or it was just part of the heat stroke. Another incident, which can be attributed to shock and or epilepsy, if you want to go down that road, even though I've never been diagnosed with epilepsy, it does run through my family. For the longest time there, every three years, I was under the doctors having EEGs and CAT scans and everything else done on my sorry ass, just because of the amount of problems that I've had. But... I was in having, what was it, I just dehydrated, 
I had just gone through a serious bout of dehydration. But basically, it was a combination of food poisoning, not drinking enough, and two other factors. And, well, I was on IV and stuff. When they removed the IV, I basically passed out and had what the nurse equated to an epileptic seizure. Well, when they scanned me afterwards, there was no evidence of epilepsy or a seizure that had occurred or anything else like that. But during that period of time, I saw this absolutely amazing vision of a train run across the open prairie, a horse, an airplane, and it was just everything was in red and black. It was going super fast. It was just this conglomeration of images flying through my head. When I woke up, I tried to tell them that, and they just said, oh, it's shock, and just kind of brushed to the side as just a temporary, what the, temporary shock issue. Uh, later on, I was at the... Oh, what was it? I was having a physical done. And I told the nurse that I was prone to fainting. Um, due to shock. When they took blood. Well, I passed out and I went out for almost seven and a half minutes. I scared the living shit out of about two nurses and three doctors. At that point they had called an ambulance and everything. But during that window of time where I had basically gone out to lunch, I remember seeing my office and everything that was going on in the office that day and the problems that they were having and everything else. And I got back to the office and I went through it and before anyone even talked to me I told them how to solve all the problems that they had been having that day and no one could figure out how I achieved that. Well, my perspective on that one is it was a combination of shock and predictability. I have a very vivid imagination. I have a very keen sense of being able to predict what other people are going to be doing, what other people are thinking. So the way I always marked that particular incident down is the fact that I had the ability to think about everything that would be typically happening in the office, all the projects that were typically going on, and all the problems that they should come up with. And that's how I just kind of marked that one down. It was a combination of shock and just thinking about work in general. Now, whether you'd believe any of this or not, it's your choice. I really don't care. I know what's happened to me. I know what the experiences that I've had. Whether or not it's examples of a spirit, soul, or otherwise, or just a very vivid imagination, and I do have that, definitely. A combination of some wicked-ass shock and just some really trippy experiences, so be it. But what is what is what is. Do I have any quote-unquote near-death experiences? Not that I can actually prove records for, but I do have some pretty fucking funny things in my past life medical history.